BS Parth Sati, whose uh, group CFO M&M uh, joins in to discuss uh, their earnings quarter a bit more in detail and also what's happened uh, with regards uh, to the growth uh, in the rural segment. Mr. Parth Sati, it's great to have you in the show. Thanks very much for taking out the time. Good morning. What's pushed you to dial back the tractor guidance uh, to the lower end of the 12 to 14 percent range? Is the rural picture not likely to be as rosy as earlier or are you just being cautiously optimistic? Uh, you put it right, we are optimistic, uh, but also that or the kind of growth that we would have uh, uh, expected, it is from an expectation point of view we are moderating, but you see we have had two very good year of growth in tractors, this is the third year in growth, so earlier we had talked about the overall growth to be in the range of 12 to 14 percent. We are still at 12 to 14 percent and that's what is the industry guidance that we have. But within that, if you ask for a nuanced one that are you more towards 14 or 12, then we can say that the bias is more towards 12 than 14. So, so we not change too much, but there is a slight bit. And if you want to kind of look at why that is happening, um, then we have to look at that four or five factors in the year beginning when I talk to you. I talked about that monsoon, commodity price, fuel price, liquidity and forex. And if you looked at now where we stand, all of them not quite negative, but slightly on the southward side. So in spite of this, I think the rural has done phenomenally well from that perspective and therefore it's on the same vicinity, slight, you know, instead of more bias towards 14, it's bias towards 12. Okay, good to hear that. So how is it that you plan to uh, mitigate the risk of high dependency on rural markets since we're already starting to see signs of rural growth faltering and we can see that as an industry trend, not just with M&M. &M. Uh, first and foremost is we must look at this in two, uh, you know, it's a tale of two cities. When I look at tractors, the rural is doing re very well and I don't see any uh, negative tense and I wanted to here kind of bring in two pointers from what we see at the ground level. First is monsoon and everybody kind of says, oh, 91% monsoon. So it's not very good. But if you kind of break it up into two parts, except for east and northeast, if you look at the monsoon, then it's 96% and you'll say that's normal monsoon. And 88% of tractor industry, and I say it's a surrogate to, let's say, production of food grains. That industry had normal rainfall. Some of these states have had deficient rainfall, a smaller rainfall, and affected, but a majority of it, 88% of the industry, have received broadly normal rainfall. The second one is in terms of the crop. You know that the crop which has come in even slightly larger than the previous year. So production has not been hampered. But it's not runaway. It is there in this. And with the growth in prices in the MSP that has been there, we think there is a huge opportunity in fact going forward. So I don't see rural growth faltering. Uh, in terms of therefore tractors, we are very good with it and uh, both on the top end front and the bottom line front. But if you come to auto, uh, then we have a good mix of rural and urban. So, and actually we should not break it into rural and urban. I would say commercial vehicles and personal vehicles. In commercial vehicle, we are going very well and the demand is in fact strong and continues to be strong. And personal vehicle, it's little bit more moderate than what we had hoped for at the beginning of the year or forecast at the beginning of the year. I hope that gives you a broader picture. Okay. Uh, Mr. Parsa, the other tractor majors are guiding for a strong growth in second half of this year in terms of tractor demand while you're guiding for second half to be similar to uh, what you've seen in the first half. Uh, what are your channel checks suggesting in terms of the sustainability of these growth trends? Yeah, I think it's a very good question. 
and in a sense which is why we said we are not changing the guidance as I say that if others are guiding you towards uh, a higher growth unke muh mein ghishak, you prepare for what you think is a reasonable case and I am not saying there is no up case and I would you know like to be honestly proved wrong in this grace and the growth becomes higher in which case we are very much there able and willing to participate in that growth but even a 12 to 14 percent growth on a very two year high brace is a very significant growth so so we will be very happy with that as well so so i don't see any dissonance with the others i we could have an optimistic and a realistic case i believe what i am suggesting is a realistic case but there is an upward bias possible mm. you know analysts are uh, seeing multiple headwinds uh, you know whether it's a tractor cycle peaking by fy21 bs6 transitions cv cycle slowing down uh, could that in any meaningful way impact your margin performance any levers you're betting on to ensure that there's better margin maintenance uh, better or cost rationalization over the course of the next two to three years but i believe uh, mr parthasarthi is back with us uh, mr parthasarthi before we let you go sir there was that question i asked you about you know going forward on margin management uh, and i'm glad you actually waited by for that response uh, how do you look at keeping profitability intact in, in the coming years Uh, I, I think it's a very good uh, question. What is last? I talked about four or five factors, or five or six factors, which were to be watched. And then all factor currently we have a little bit of uh, going south. Uh, it is not yet very headwinds, but suddenly all of them uh, in in the year beginning there were tailwinds on all this, whether it is forex, liquidity, uh, whether it's commodity price and so on. And now there is. Uh, escalation on all these friends and that is putting pressure on margins but I'm delighted that in spite of that this is uh, Q2 has been the best quarter ever in terms of profit whether it is uh, PBIT PBT or PAC for m and and on the top line Q2 it's the best ever quarter so basically what I'm saying we have been able to manage profit and profitability in a balanced way even in this kind of tough situation the key problem that we will have is if the commodity price keep rising then passing that on it becomes a challenge and it takes time however we see that cycle moderating uh, and hopefully we'll have some positive news in q4 especially with you know crude price now seeming to come down so overall we will manage by focusing on the top line on the profit and profitability and we have a lot of levers like productivity in the system cost as we call it which is all cost and in terms of VA and VE value addition value engineering all of which are focus which I keep saying in good times it will increase margin and in tough times it will help us manage margin. Okay great to hear that Mr. Parthasarsti uh, thank you so much for taking the time out and chatting with us today.